behind the goal. We reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, the, the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull oh, check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Sectional title games are over, on to the group championship game. Remember, welcome to the Friday night kickoff show here on Morris Sussex Sports. Danny Weiss, I'm sorry, I don't want to hit your arm, you your second single shot. Dave Hassagan, and another celebrity guest uh, panelist, Mr. Yeah. Matt Giovanni. <laughs> Mr. Giovanni, we had the boss, George Muhan, last week. Uh, Tyler Paluzzi is not with us uh, this week again, so Matt Giovanni, welcome to the panel, my friend. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we have some games to talk about. We have four games total, one semifinal game, and then a couple of group semifinal games. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. We'll go non-public A to begin things. The number six seed, Del Barton Green Wave, and the number two seed, Bergen Catholic Crusaders. Del Barton, who would have thought that the Green Wave would be in this spot after they played St. Peter's Prep last week, but they dominated them 35-12. to It was the Ryan Trafford show, 282 yards and three touchdowns on the day. They rushed total for 321 yards as a team, and they led 21-6 at half and then just steamrolled forward past St. Peter's Prep. But defense was the key. They held St. Peter's quarterback, Champ Long, who we had high regard for last week, mm -hmm. to under 200 yards passing and picking him off twice. A real statement win for the Green Wave. No one expected to get to this point, even us. But now, they play the number two seed in the 9-1 and one Bergen Catholic Crusaders. A typical season for BC this year, with the exception of that early season loss to Don Bosco earlier this season. They rolled through Donovan Catholic last week to get here. They rolled with the two quarterbacks. They rolled with sophomore Dom Campanelli and Jack Duffy. Both have seen action, both saw action last week against Donovan Catholic. But this run attack is also very lethal. Saheed St. Floor with over 1,105 yards, 12 touchdowns. And this defense speaks for itself. Have to mention the impact of Maryland commit DJ Samuels and Texas commit Sadir Mitchell. 23 and a half tackles for loss and nine and a half sacks combined between the two of them. This is the toughest test yet for Del Barton, no doubt, but would be a major upset and a huge statement across the state. Can they do it? And if they can, how can they do it, Dave Hashigan? Well, we didn't expect them, some of us didn't expect them to win last week. No. St. Peter's, you know, <laughs> controlled the game in a close battle in the regular season, and they completely flipped the script last week on the road. So if Del Barton's going to do this in the semifinal round, it has to be the Trafford show once again, mm -hmm. because the last time these two teams matched up, it was a good, good ball game, 21-6, I believe, or 20-6, to that, you know, BC got the win. They held Del Barton to five yards total on the ground. Five. That's it. That's all. So when you look at this matchup, they have to be able to get the ground game going. You mentioned their defense, though. That defensive line of Samuels and Mitchell is outstanding. Um, they've got an excellent secondary as well, 23 interceptions as a team. But in a way, that really doesn't play against the way Del Barton plays. They don't throw a lot of deep balls. A lot of it's you know, short passes mm -hmm. out in the flat. They don't really go downfield that much as opposed to some of the other bigger prep schools in the, in the state. So... In a way, it kind of plays in Del Barton's favor, but you still have to deal with this is Bergen Catholic. You're talking about a juggernaut in state, a team that's always competing, sometimes have been nationally ranked. This is an uphill battle for Del Barton. There's no question about that. Is it hopeless? Looking at what, I, what we've seen so far, I don't think it is. Danny? Del Barton, to me, all season, unpredictable. And it's funny because they're unpredictable but with some of the best players in the county. So, you know, you take that into consideration. They're on a two-game winning streak. Um, I've been wrong about them all season, and their record is definitely not uh, who they are. Six and five, t to me, watching them play, looking at the stats, they're a better team than six and five. But look at the teams they're playing, right? So now we're going into Bergen, you know, they're playing Bergen Catholic. You have a combined 110 
uh, receptions for 160 attempts passing. That, that's unheard of. You have two receivers that are well over 400 uh, yards, and the seven of their last eight games, they're scoring 30 or more points. So Del Barton definitely has their work cut out for them. But, but, you know, a part of me believes in this team that if they could put it all together like they should be and, you know, and erase the five losses they have, that, you know, it could be a, a much more competitive game than, you know, we, we might think in our heads. Yeah, when I think about Del Barton this season and this game in particular, I think back to when they played them earlier in the season when Bergen Catholic was ranked top ten in the country. I thought Del Barton was going to lose that game by 40, and they only lost 21, was it 20? Yeah, I believe it was 21-6. Mm -hmm. So they were able to hold up with Bergen Catholic at their highest this season. Bergen Catholic has been able to clean things up since the loss to Don Bosco, so they are rolling high again. I think Del Barton is going to have the necessary weapons, especially Ryan Trafford after last week's huge game. 38 rushing attempts. That's what they're going to need to continue with this week. They're going to need to just hammer the ball with Ryan Trafford. Bergen Catholic has 23 interceptions on the season. They're not going to be able to throw against this team. I don't think that you're going to be able to see Rob Russo air out the ball. I think that it's going to have to be a ground and pound attack. I think their defense is going to have to hold Bergen Catholic in check. If they can do that, I think Del Barton definitely will have a chance for a win this week. Sounds very optimistic there, Matrimony <laughs> does. So we'll move on to the public schools, what we know best. Group 2 semifinals, Caldwell at 11-0 and Westwood at 11-0. Caldwell took down Newton to capture their sectional title 35-7. to Guys, honestly, just was too much for Newton to handle on defense. Everyone contributed. Harry Ballin, Joey Marinello, three touchdowns combined. A huge day from a guy in this offense that goes so underrated because of all this talent. Lucas Latimer had 138 yards and a touchdown, and Luke Curzum did what he did. 12 for 13, 191 yards and a touchdown, not too shabby. This defense, too, got to give them props. They held Newton to seven points. This is a team that scored 30-plus points all season long. That's a huge thing. Braden Nolan had his moments, but Caldwell held Taylor Sibley's to 10 carries and 42 yards, and Louis Anamone for Caldwell had two interceptions. Caldwell shows their pure dominance on the biggest stage, and it only gets bigger with a Westwood team who got past Rutherford 21-20 to advance. The first time all season, though, that they were held to under 28 points. So that's interesting to note. Their offense can put up points. Quarterback Robbie Kar Karchik. 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns, close to a 1,000-yard rusher as well. That's also something to watch out for. Jack Dugan, their senior running back, over 1,000 yards and 22 touchdowns. He's the kid that makes this offense go. And this defense also gets after it. 21 sacks as a team, five players of which have multiple sacks, nine interceptions as a team. They fly around the ball and can turn a game on its head for sure. Might be the toughest test for, that Caldwell has faced yet, but same could go for Westwood. What do we think, Matrimony? Well, when I look at this game, I really like the matchup that we have here. Caldwood and Caldwell and Westwood, excuse me, have been basically swapping places in the rankings for the Group 2 in New Jersey basically all year. It's been, Caldwell's been won some weeks. Westwood's been won some weeks. Caldwell goes into this game number one after a huge win last week against Newton. But it's really interchangeable, and you're looking at two teams that are very good at what they do. Westwood, with that rushing attack, over 3,000 rushing yards between all of their backs. And you, you mentioned Jack Dugan, but you've also got Robbie Karchik and others that have 900 yards. You've got Colby Lauten with 450 yards. So you've got a decent amount of running backs, and you've got a quarterback, also Robbie Karchik, actually. So the dual threat aspect there, which is going to be huge for this game. Caldwell, You've got a team that's just been great at, at everywhere. They oh, were undefeated last year, undefeated this year. They're looking to keep that streak going as long as possible. And you've got a lot of great seniors on this team that really want to finish out their high school career strong. I think Caldwell's definitely rolling in, at least from what we see, because we've seen them so much in more Sussex sports. We've seen Caldwell just dominate over the past two years, and I would have a hard time picking against them, but I think it's really anybody's game here. Absolutely. So on the Westwood side, when you have a quarterback, like you pointed out, over 1,000 yards passing and a running back over 1,000 yards, where's the missing link? I'm going to tell you where the missing link isn't. It's not on the offensive line because if you're able to have your skill guys, skill guys accumulate that many yards passing 
and on the ground, you have something. And, and let's put the offense, let's butt it to the side for a second. What about the six shutouts? We, we, we yeah, can't forget the six show. shutouts. So Westwood, I'm going to call them the machine in this game. Cardwell, though, you know, listen, their record speaks for themselves. Um, I don't want to repeat what you, know, what you talked about, uh, the talent. We know the talent is there, but defense is going to be the key. They have to win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball to, to be competitive. If they're not competitive, this game could end up being a runway game for Westwood. In other words, Codwell has to repeat the performances last week. A couple reasons, if I'm Caldwell, to be concerned in this game. You mentioned that defensive line. Dario McThurin, just a sophomore, eight sacks on the season. Key cog, and you mentioned that line battle is going to be huge. Yes, they only held Newton to seven points. They still allowed 234 rushing yards. <coughs> they just kept him out of the end zone. It was the red zone that was the key. So if you're looking again, you talk about Karchik, you talk about Duggan or Dugan, whichever one. We, we prefer Dugan no, because Dugan. Warren Hills. Um, they've combined, as you mentioned, 33 touchdowns between those two kids alone and almost 1,400 yards. Mm -hmm. If Caldwell allows the kind of yards they did against Newton, they held at the very last moment. If they allow that to get this far again, the way Westwood plays, I guess who's played tougher opponents, it might be a tough game for them. But, again, Caldwell is in a, such a force. Louis Animo with a pair of interceptions last week, he's going to be a game changer for them next year. He already is one now. And it's kind of that X factor for them. But I think the biggest thing is going to be Casal, Fano, and Cater on that defensive line. Yeah. Can they slow down Karchik? Mm -hmm. If they can, they're going to be in this game and have a good chance to win it. If they can't, it's going to, it might be a long day for Caldwell. Yeah. It's going to be a really tight one. I agree. Should be an interesting one there. We move to the group three semis. Public apology time for me. <laughs> Wes Morris silenced all the critics last week. You. Me. <laughs> Take care of business against West Essex 21-7. Sorry, Westmore Central Wolfpack fans. I'm never picking against you again. I love you, and I learned my lesson. You got a tissue on you for yeah. this one? Can I, can I, can I, I might need <laughs> it. it, it might. It's, a, it's, it's okay. okay, you're giving me the blessing. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mount Olive, you're giving me the Westmore blessing. Very right. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But yes, they silenced all the critics. They held West Essex to 150 total yards of offense, a defensive masterclass by the Wolfpack. Stefano Montella, another day at the office, 250 plus yards and two touchdowns with 14 tackles also on defense. Very, very impressive from number 32 for Westmore Central. They captured back-to-back -back sectional titles for the first time in program history. That's very hard to believe, in my opinion, how great West Morris has been. So again, I'm sorry, West Morris. You did what you did. Welcome to the group semifinals. <laughs> but now they play Old Japan at 10-1. and one. Took care of Hillside in the sectional final 28-14. This team is very well balanced offensively. Tom, uh, their quarterback, Tommy Caracolo, 1,800 yards and 24 touchdowns through the air. Their running back, Aiden Heaney, 1200, over 1,200 yards and 22 touchdowns on the ground. And they have three wide receivers with four or more touchdown catches and over 250 yards. But also, yeah, just steal his pen, no problem. Yeah, yeah just not keep a problem. Pen, Why, it, <laughs> was that caught on the air? Yeah, of course oh, it was. Oh. <laughs> their, defense, their defense is also stout. 23, 23 sacks as a team. And they're led by their junior defensive lineman, Dennis Delaney, who, had eight, who has eight sacks and 75 tackles, and Jack Small, who has five, five sacks with 70 tackles. This defense can fly around the ball and cause a lot of turnovers. Two heavyweights in group three. Should be a fun one. Thoughts and our keys. Dave. Westmore Central last week did exactly what they did last year to West Essex. Correct. Tight ball game until late, ground them down, and took care of business. And now they face another team from that mm -hmm. title run from last year, Old Japan, who they took care of just before uh, West Essex last week. What can we say about Montella? 2,300 yards on the season. He's averaging over eight yards a carry. That's ridiculous. Had a great game and especially and came back from what was a tough opponent last, mm -hmm. last week. I only had 88 against West Essex in the regular season, over 230 this time around. But again, who was the X Factor? Vinny Desiderio. Huge touchdown late in the game. And also great games from Tom Borgia, the freshman, as well as Mr. DeFusco. Great day on defense mm -hmm. for him. So the biggest thing, though, is can they control the clock in this one? Because this is a very different Old Japan team than it was last year. Last year, Old Japan got through the first round because of a COVID out in their first round game against, I believe, Demarest. So they came and rested, but didn't really, wasn't really prepared, weren't game ready. You mentioned the three stars, Caracciolo, Heaney, uh, Heaney and Brooks. It's a very, very rare combination to have those kind of players. They are explosive. This team is an offensive juggernaut. 
Biggest thing for West Mar Central, do what you did against West Essex last week, grind this game to a crawl. And if you can do that, they're going to win this game late in the contest. So, Old Tapan, they're like Old Tapan, Phillipsburg, West Mars. These are just teams every year that are always on top, no, no doubt. And there's a reason there. Very well coached, uh, very disciplined kids. They just know how to play the sport and just very competitive. You know, there's a disadvantage here uh, for West Mars, and I'm going to explain what that oh, is. Really? Yes. And, okay. and, and, the, and the viewers are going to, you know, the viewers from West Mars are going to agree with me. Though it's not going to affect the outcome of the, outcome of the game. The fact that it's an 11 a.m. football game, mm -hmm. not at West Morris, not at 730. So th there's a slight disadvantage. It might be a mind thing, but I know they're getting through the week. Now, West Morris, listen, uh, yeah, you know how I feel about this team. I could give you 25 reasons why they're going to be successful this game. Montella, I'm not going to go through all 20 of them. <laughs> Montella, Desiderio which you mentioned, Corkery, Vieira, Drown, Roley, Borgia, Seebeck, Cope, Frain, Stefanelli, Leonhardt. I could keep going. Mm -hmm. But th this is a solid team on both sides of the ball. And, yes, I'm going to use my phrase, they're <laughs> winning special teams as well. Right? So if yep. you win two of the three, you're going to come out on top. Uh, West Morris is, is on a roll. They're on, uh, I think it's a 26-game winning streak. And I don't know what's going to stop them right now. In a game like this between two programs that have just been so successful, I like to look not only at the, at the offense, defense, uh, and special teams, I like to look at the coaching as well. And this is just about as good of a coaching matchup as you could get. Two mm. guys that are in the top 25 in New Jersey State history in coaching wins. You have Brian Dunn and Kevin Henley, who have just been excellent at what they do for so long now. And these programs really have been successful for all that time. When you look at this year specifically, obviously, Stefano Montella is the player to watch out for this game. You don't just roll into a game with 30 touchdowns on the ground, 2,306 yards on the season. How could you have a better senior season than that? I still can't wrap my head around why he's not playing running back in college, but they must have seen something in linebacker, and he's also a very good linebacker. This defense for West Morris Central is not something to sleep on, as I think they're going to give Old Tapan a problem. Old Tapan, they come into this game again um, as well, sorry, with a very good defense. Eight interceptions on the season, 23 sacks on the season, and that's what's going to really be important for me. 23 sacks, 67 tackles for loss. I think this front line is definitely going to be what needs to win the game for them. We know what West Morris is going to do. We know their attack. Old Tapan knows their attack. There's not going to be anything new that they try out this week they're going to need to stop the running game. And if they could do that, then it's just going to be a coin flip, in my opinion. Next up, we have Group 1 semifinals. Mountain Lakes gets past Brearley in their sectional final, their eighth sectional title for the Herd since 1974. And guys, for the second straight week, Ben Miniter comes up huge with a 45-yard touchdown to Gavin Ananian, which was the difference in this one. The Herd defense, though, held Matt Sims, the quarterback from Brearley, Matt Sims, in check for the most part. They had a couple key turnover on downs to really shift the game in their favor, and Mount Lakes ran for 157 yards as a team, but I really got to give it up to Ben Miniter on this one. Three okay. touchdown passes of over, thir of over 40 yards. Like he, now, now the kid shows up and plays big-time football for this Mount Lakes Herd team. They, don't have to, they didn't have to rely so much on Jimmy Elliott, Nico Dunn, and, and, and Hernando to really get the job done. Miniter showed it with his arm against Brearley. So now they're taking on a 10-1 Wee Quake team a potent offense, averaged 34 points in the regular season, headlined by running back Rashawn Marshall with just under 1,600 yards and 17 touchdowns, one of the most lethal running backs in the state. Also quarterback Lamont Spates has had his, himself a nice senior season running this offense, and wide receiver Ishim Smith-Marset is a key weapon with 271 yards and six touchdown catches. This defense is well led by linebacker Quinton Reed with 10 sacks and 49 tackles, and linebacker Tahid Simmons, who has 73 tackles, which leads with quiet. Two teams both know each other. They played each other in the playoffs last season and in the regular season, for that matter. The Herd got the better of Wee Quayek last year. I expect a lot of big things in this game. What do, we, what do you guys expect? Matrimony, we'll start with you. So what I'm looking at really is their two matchups from last year. They played them in the last regular season game, which was a Wee Quayek win. They won 28-2-8. And then two weeks later in the sectional semifinals, Mountain Lakes was able to take the win by just 7, 28 to 21. 
I think that these two teams are more prepared for each other than any of the other games we talked about because of this recent history. As you get further and further into the playoffs, you have games like I don't believe Caldwell's ever played Westwood before, mm -hmm. and if they have, it's been like once in the last 30 years. These two schools have played each other recently, and I think that's going to make it that much better of a game because they're going to be prepared for each other. They're going to be perhaps pulling out some tricks. Ben Miniter, as you mentioned, has had a phenomenal playoffs and only a junior may be a key of what's to come next year as they're going to lose some of these senior running backs. I really think this game is going to come down to whether Mountain Lakes can keep out of their own way. That's something that we've seen really in both games last week because me and Nick uh, were broadcasting so last week we got to see them against Greerly. They played a very solid game on defense but the offense couldn't stop tripping over themselves in the second half which is why it really stayed a game the whole time and in the week prior against Waldwick they gave up nearly a comeback. Waldwick had a, them at a third and ten and if they weren't able to convert they would have gotten the ball back with two minutes left. Mountain Lakes has the talent, we all know that, to win a game like this. They just need to not trip over themselves like they've done a little bit in this playoffs and I believe that under a coach like Daryl Fusco they'll definitely be able to do that. We know we Quake is going to score a lot of points, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Mountain Lakes has the same ability to put up a lot of points. I think what's go what, what the key to this game is is how Mountain Lakes is going to control the line of scrimmage. They, they have the personnel. Mm. They need to slow down that offense. Okay, that, That's important. And every time we Quake scores, they're going to have to come back and answer. Mountain Lakes is going to have to force turnovers, um, make... We quick force them to make mistakes. And, and t to me, that's what the, the keys to this game is. This game will go down to the fourth quarter, the last two minutes. It's going to be a lot of scoring. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth. The winner is going to be the one that makes the less mistakes in this football game. You asked me what to expect. I expect mm -hmm. this game will be done in about an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes. This is going to be a lot of ground mm -hmm. game. And two teams that, again, not only do they know each other, they mirror each other quite a bit. A little bit more of the passing game you'll see from Wee as opposed to Mountain Lakes. In terms of the herd, though, I've got some concerns coming into this game. And the biggest thing is playing four quarters of football. Mm -hmm. yeah. Defensively, sure. they have all playoff long. They've been fantastic on defense. They've been better as the game has gone, to, gone along. Excuse me. On offense, that hasn't been the case. They've had strong first halves. Second halves, they've struggled in their, first, in their last two games. If they do that against this Wequake team, as Danny said, Wequake is consistently going to score all game long. If Mountain Lake struggles to find their offensive grip yep. in that third and fourth quarter, mm -hmm. they will have a problem on their hands, so they have to hit quickly and often. If they get a couple scores in the first half, they got a shot here. If it turns into, oh, we can't score in the second half again, and it's not a big margin, trouble potentially for the herd. Absolutely. Great games are ahead. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, time for our pick segment for the end of the show. We'll be right back on the Friday Night Kickoff Show. Hey, don't you just love it when more assistant sports broadcast your game? Or do you prefer a silent motion detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through more assistant sports award-winning service that brings you play-by-play -play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Sussex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. Segment time here on the Friday Night Kickoff Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we have to recap last week. Because, wow, was we were all, I... We were all showed up by Mr. Muha. Was I bad last week? Let me tell you. I, I was going to say One that, in four? I wasn't going to say it, but sure. You could say it. Go ahead, say it. You were bad last I week. I was horrible <laughs> last week. One in four? Ugh. Uh, by the way, who else was undefeated up there? I see George Muha was. 
And 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 uh, all right, Dave Hashagan went five and zero. Oh, okay, last week, great. You you're, went, you're welcome. Forty two and sixteen overall for the season. Great. Still have the fewest. Our losses celebrity guest picker George Muha, of course, went five and zero oh last week. Okay. Uh, Danny went three and two last week, and uh, Tyler Paluzzi was on the show last week, so he's still six and zero. Oh, but yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Matt Javoni, no pressure, pal, but you know, you got a, a celebrity guest picker. Here you are. You got you to gotta beat George. I could have the best win percentage out uh, of all see, of us. We will definitely find that out. We will start first with the non public A semis Bergen Catholic, Del Barton. Dave. This is going to be a really interesting one. Bergen Catholic is Bergen Catholic. Right. You know what they're going to be able to do. Last week, Del Barton wasn't given a chance. They stunned everybody and won in a pretty convincing fashion. Yep. This will not be a big win for anybody. But Del Barton shocks the oh. state because guess what? Bergen Catholic, they're thinking about Don Bosco Ooh. next week. Del Barton wins on a late touchdown by Mr. Trafford by seven. And they, and they go to MetLife. They go to MetLife. Wow. Okay. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> That's pretty convincing, you know? <laughs> no, it's not convincing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Dave, I love you to death, but no. Um, Del Barton's too unpredictable, and and I said, I'll be That's the first. That's a good thing. Well, unpredictability. Not in the final, the playoffs to get to MetLife. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my back. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, right? We have, we have two powerhouse teams going in, and I even said Del Barton's record is not predictive of how they've been playing and who they are, but, and the times that I didn't pick them or I picked, I, I've been horrible with Del Barton all week. But I, their time has come, and a Bergen Catholic is going to win this game uh, by about two touchdowns. Uh, I really, I, I want to be with you, Dave. I want to be with you, pal. Do you want to be right or not? I'm going to be right because, unfortunately, Bergen Catholic's going to win the game. <laughs> but by 10, 30 to 20 over double. It'll Bergen. be a closer game than, than, than what it was the first time. Yes, right? absolutely. Dave, I'm absolutely on the same wave. Oh, wavelength, I like it. Oh, the green okay. wave will, in fact, be rolling on to MetLife, and I think... Del Barton's going to score 27. Bergen Catholic's only going to put up 24, and they are just going to struggle. They're looking forward, too forward, to Don Bosco. If, if that happens, I will go to MetLife Stadium, and I will paint myself green. You heard it here. You heard it here. You heard it here. You know what? I'll paint myself green, too. How's that? <laughs> Del Barton, you have two really good reasons to win. Okay, three good reasons to win this one. <laughs> Javoni, I'll turn it back to you. Caldwell Westwood. I think Caldwell is just going to keep it going. I love the mentality that they've got going into this game. I think Caldwell 34, Westwood 28. I have Caldwell 35, Westwood 23. They showed me, I mean, they're for real every year. They've won 26 in a row, 25 26, in a row. 27, yeah, something like that. Caldwell, big. Westwood, big. Oh, wow. I, just, I don't know if Caldwell can uh, perform like they did last week. What? Westwood, they have an overpowering, overwhelming offense. I'm just going to have to go in that mindset. Westwood by a touchdown. He's going all. He's going non-locals. Every, everyone's going uh, big offensive game. I think it's the exact opposite. Really? I think, I mean, six shutouts for Westwood. You can't overstate that. Caldwell did a, has done a great job defensively all year. It's a question of who has the bigger playmakers. That is Caldwell, but they win on a late field goal to Ooh, win this game. That's right. I like I like where your mind is. West Morris, Old Japan. I mean, we can't do it, can we? Can we pick against West Morris? I'm team? not. Ever again. <laughs> Ever I think, again. I mean, Hear that? Oh, this is, again, this is a very different Old Japan mm -hmm. than the team they faced last year. This is a more potent offense. But if we've seen anything from West Morris Central, they can shut down potent offenses with that defense of theirs. They will control this game. West Morris wins by two scores. Wow. wow. Back to okay. MetLife. Wow. All right. All right. They're going to Rutgers. <coughs> oh, to right. Rutgers. Yes, yes right. Fair enough. Even without the Johnny Cash introduction, West Morris is going to win this game. Am I too young to understand that? Oh, no, 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 no. What, happens, there, is, the what line, happens is before the game. Yeah, you could explain if the, you want. The line comes out to their very own song by Johnny uh, Cash. Yes. Okay. It is. And they're not going to get that this week, but it's... Uh, they'll find a way. They'll find a way. <laughs> they'll play yeah. on the bus. On the they'll, all, they'll all have yeah. their headphones on going. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, West Morris convincingly will win this game. Never again will I pick against West Morris. <laughs> it's going to be closer than the experts think. Wolfpack 30, Old Japan 27. I think it's going to be a huge win for West Morris. I, this team just again and again has proven why they mm -hmm. deserve to be here. I think Henley is 
the top tier of coach that you can have at this level of football. I think Westmore is 24, Old Japan 7. All right, Jeroni. Mountain Lakes with Clay to end us off. Mountain Lakes, I think they're going to clean it up this week. I think that they don't make as many mistakes. They know this team. They know what they have to do. Mountain Lakes 28 with Quake 22. Yeah, Mountain Lakes is going to throw we Quake off their game that they've had all year. They're just you're going to come in intimidating. Uh, I, I like this team, and, and they're going on to Rutgers. This will be a very tight game, I believe. I think we Quake will have a good handle in this game until the X Factor, Ben Miniter, uh -huh. becomes the factor. And here's the other thing, too, to remember – we Quake still plays a Thanksgiving Day game against Shabazz. That game is huge. Mm -hmm. Going to MetLife is bigger. The question is, which one will they weigh in their minds? I think a late Ben Miniter passing touchdown gives Mountain Lakes a seven-point win. Can you say to who? <sighs> That's a good question. I think it's good. You know what? Dezamba. That's a good one. Picking against that the Nanian. That's a good one. Hey, I, I, Nanian was a... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Dezamba did have two two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so, Nanian did have one of the best catches. That is true. But that the big question is, neither, none of the teams in the playoffs have been looking for that. Mm -hmm. Even though they've shown it twice. That's true. <laughs> That's so, very true. the question is, we quick, right? It's very true. Uh, if I didn't go to Jefferson, I would love Mountain Lakes even more than I already do. Mountain Lakes 26, we quick 23. Oof. Go Herd. All the way. If I had the thing under my shirt this week, <laughs> I would do it. Uh, go Hearn. Coach Fusco, get it done. Let's do it. Thank you for tuning in to the Friday Night Kickoff Show, everybody. We appreciate the love. As always, reach out to the big boss, George Muha, right there. George at morrisosicsports.com to book us. Winter season's coming up soon. We don't only just do football. We do everything here at Morrisosic Sports. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Love you. Bye.